that. And I'm pretty sure everyone heard about the incident here on Wood Ave. Little boy just run over in the streets. And so for somebody else to lift up those families um, in their time of loss and suffering and pain, that God would be their comfort. And then we've had, we've been praying for and thanking God for um, healing of those that are sick. And we know in particular, um, Sister Vesper has been sick and my husband is, yeah. that is turning around and we're just gonna ask someone to lift up a Thanksgiving praise. And for all of our travelers, <laughs> Brother Joe goes back and forth every, couple of weeks um yeah. sister Andrew just came from spain sister beverly just came back from trinidad and tobago sister kathleen just returned sister angela lewis just went off to um florida today sister monica just returned from tobago as well so just to lift up our travelers so pick one of those and as the spirit leads you whatever the one of those the spirit asks that you um lift up tonight we're going to start we're going to delve in because we certainly want to get back to matthew chapter six there was so much substance there we want to go back to that so um i'm looking at a passage i read before but i just want to go there again it's um opening up with psalms chapter three and you know, I looked around at uh, the the majesty. There's um some place in the U.S. It's on fire, and they're talking about the rise of that smoke. But yet, when you look beyond that and look around, um, the majesty of God's handiwork, um, is still visible, and we give Him praise and we give Him glory. So, um, Psalms chapter eight. Uh, says, O oh Lord, our Lord, the majesty and the glory of your name fills all the earth and overflows the heavens. And this, by the way, is the version is called Living Bible. His glory fills the heavens and or fills the earth and overflows the heavens. Verse two says, you have taught the little children to praise you perfectly in their innocence. These kids knows how to praise God. May their example shame and silence your enemy. When I look at the night sky and see the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have made, I cannot understand how you can bother with mere man to pay any attention to him, my God. And yet you have made him only a little lower than the angels and placed a crown of glory and honor upon his head. You have put him in charge of everything you made. Everything is put under his authority all sheep and oxen and wild animals too, the birds and the fish and all the life in the sea. O oh, Jehovah, our Lord, the majesty and glory of your name fills the earth. Oh my goodness, how powerful. And just looking at the different versions, oh my goodness, you, you get so much um, because we're just so accustomed to you know, nothing's wrong with King James, but to hear it sometimes in a different version just opens it up for us. How the majesty and the glory of the name of our almighty God fills this earth, that no matter what's going on to the left, to the right, all around us, from America to Russia and beyond, God's glory still fills and overflows the earth and overflows the heavens and we give him praise that he's concerned about every thing, including mere man. Father, we thank you. Almighty God, we praise you for this very breath that we breathe right now. It is all yours. 
And God, we give you praise. We give your name glory because your glory fills the earth. And we glorify you like the trees that wave their the branches in praise to you, like the birds that flap their wing uh, to you. We lift praises to you as your glory overflows the heavens and the earth. God, we, you're worthy. And God, we're grateful for the opportunity to have life and breath and movement in our beings and our blood flowing through, warm through our veins, that we have today another opportunity to pause and to say thank you. God, we raise a thanksgiving praise to you as we crown you with glory and honor because there's no one like you. Father, we praise you and as we um, come tonight to glean from your word again. God, we sit at your feet to be fed of your word. And we thank you for your manservant. We thank you for everyone that will come on board tonight. God, we pray a blessing upon those that are going to come with whatever situation, whatever need, whatever cares. God, your word remind us, First Peter 5, 7, that we could just cast them on you and come on in and feast from your manna, God. Thank you for Sister Marina, who we have not seen in a while. We just thank you that your hand is upon us. She too has been through a season of loss and suffering, but God, you're a mighty comforter. Glory and honor belong to you, mighty comforter. We thank you, God, for this woman of, of God that's with us tonight. Father, have your way with us. We're open vessels to be filled up, to be filled up to an overflow. Oh, God, come have your way. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. The floor is open. One of these things that we've mentioned as the Lord leads it upon your heart, please pray. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, Sister Marina, I'll pick on you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, God bless I you. was praying, but I was praying on mute. Sorry. Oh, okay. Father, we thank you and give you praise thank and you. honor and glory. Mm. We know God is no God like you. There's no king like you. Mm. There's no savior like you, even as we... My sister read that psalm, oh God, how the heavens declare your glory, oh God, the yes, firmament, yeah. my God, show us forth your handiwork, oh God. Lord, mm. who could deny your existence, oh God? Who could deny your power and your authority, mm. mighty God? Lord, we bless your name tonight your and give you glory and praise. We thank you for the privilege of knowing you, the privilege mm. of coming at your throne, mighty God. Oh, Jesus. sitting at your feet, oh God, bringing our requests to you, God, feeling loved by you and cared for. For mm. knowing that we have a friend that sticks closer than a brother, Lord yes, God. God. Oh, Father, we thank you tonight, oh God. We, we bring, oh God, Father, that family that lost, oh God, their two sons, Lord Jesus. God. Father, we pray your comfort. We pray comfort, comfort Lord. The only yeah. comfort that you alone can give, Father, I mm. pray that you would strengthen them. In the name of Jesus. Strengthen the mother, strengthen the family, God. Mm. Lord God, the friends, the neighbors, oh God, those that yes. gather around them to support them, oh God. Yes. We pray, God, that you would give them, oh God, a word, oh God, mm. Father, mm. a mm. word of comfort, oh God. You have given them the tongue of the learned so that they know how to give 
Oh God, a word to the weary, mighty God. That's why you came. That's why you feed us with your word. That's why you call us closer, God, Father. So, Lord, we can encourage someone, oh God, Father, in the name of Jesus. uh, You are the provider. We pray that you would provide all that they need, oh God, in the name of Jesus. uh, That mother that lost that son, that family, God, Mm. that little four-year-old, oh Mm. God, Father, Mm. that unguarded Mm. moment, Mm. oh God, when that life is taken, God, you know everything. And Mm. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray comfort to that family also, God. Help them not to live, oh God, with guilt, knowing they were looking at Jesus, a card which had got Jesus. away. Father God, I pray, God, that they would not live in guilt and shame, oh God. Mm. But Father, you would lift the heavy burden, you'd comfort their hearts in this time of grief, Please, Lord, oh yeah. God, that they would recognize, oh God, mm. Father, that you know and you see all things things we are not saying that you are the one that take those that took those lives Mm -hmm. but father you know Mm -hmm. how to comfort and grief oh god you were touched with the feelings of our infirmities because you were in all points tempted like we are so we know Mm. father you know grief and you understand grief oh god yes yes. so we thank you for all that you would do god i pray god that they will able those left behind the mothers and the siblings the fathers lord will be able to continue on with life mm. i pray that you would strengthen them that the you would give Jesus. them oh god father spiritual strength to face the day to continue to take care of those that are left behind oh god yes, yes, father yes. help them to grieve in a healthy manner mighty god in the name of jesus Yes. Lord, we thank you. We give you thank praise. You. We thank yes. you for all those that surround them, oh God. Mm. But most of all, the presence of your Holy Spirit yes. in their life, that's a comforter, oh mm. God, want to lead and guide and speak to them. Oh, mighty mm. God, we thank you today. Cover them, oh God, Father, with your precious blood. Yes. Oh God, I pray, God, that through this, oh God, Father, they be closer drawn to they you. To they you. would yes. not grow yes. bitter, God, and blame you oh, falsely, oh God, but they will mm. grow in strength, oh God. Father, we thank you for grace and more grace mm. and mercy, God. Watch over them, Lord. Watch over to our families, God, as we lift mm. them to you tonight, oh God. Cover them, Lord, those that are traveling, oh God. We thank you for those that have traveled and came back home safely. Mm. And we pray mm-hmm. for those that are on their way, oh God, wherever they are going. Father, go ahead of them. May your Holy yes, Spirit sir. be present yes, in their lives. Help them, oh God, to have a mm. keen sense of awareness around them. Oh, mm. Lord, we mm. push back the forces of darkness. You know yes. how to surround them and keep them. Father God, even the things that they would eat, we ask, oh God, Cover that you them, would God. bless it, that mm. it would be nourishment for their bodies, oh God. Mm. Keep them, oh Father God, in good health. Uh, help mm. them, oh God, to encourage someone as they are oh, wherever they are going, God, that they're able to encourage someone, uh, be a blessing to someone, oh God. Yes, 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 Father, yes, yes, yes. we give you praise tonight. We give yes, you honor yes. and glory. We thank you tonight, oh God, Father. Lord, as we gathered here, God, we thank you, God. Everything is in your hand tonight, Father. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we give you Mm -hmm. praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank Thank you, Lord God. You said one word that was so powerful. Um, 
Sister Marina, when you talk about, I was thinking the same thing and you said it, you know, the guilt, you know, here's a mother, she'll think, oh my God, I came out to show them yeah. the car is what the news media said. And I was mm -hmm. just thinking of the guilt that the she guilt, could yeah. be. Oh my God. That make you oh sick God. by thinking yeah. about it. Yeah. Innocent yeah. four-year-old, no mm -hmm. understanding. And again, this is the group that has no fear. Brother Joel mentioned that in one of the lessons. They, they, they have no fear. Yeah. You know? I was just turned off the news to come on and they were talking about a little four-year-old that was missing. But the, the people have a big property. So he came outside and let him go outside. He climbed over the fence and he's in, in the middle of a soybean field. Wow. His helicopter overhead and just before I turned the channel off, they found him. The helicopter said, keep going, keep going. I could see him keep going. Mm, Four-year-old mm, again. Mm, mm, mm. Oh Four my year old God. Again. So the guilt that parents yeah. then become overwhelmed with, we rebuke yeah. that in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for saying that. Anybody else? Anybody else? I'm going to ask Sister Angeline to um, lift up she and I, we went to college together and we lost a, a dear friend, a college mate, and just people that are going through um, the loss. My neighbor across the street, very close friend with a friend of Angeline that's up the, the street, and we lost her um, the other day, last Sunday. And so just for Angeline, if you would, pray for those that are mourning the loss of friends, family members, if you would. God bless you. God's yes. our comfort. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, dear merciful government, mm. of all the ups and downs we've been going through, um, I pray for inspiration and strength. Yes, God. To become all that you created us to be. Yes. Your love is always yes. with us and with yes, me. God. What causes us to focus on this. Mm. each and every day i thank yes. you for allowing us to be patient and leaving yes. all decisions in mm. your hands yes sir. everything else will i thank you for being in control of our lives when mm. nothing else will do mm. dear god in the name of the father the son in the name of the holy ghost thank you amen Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, I give you praise tonight, Lord. Yes, God. I thank you, God, for life. Lord, oh. You have life, Lord, and life more abundantly. Thank you, God, for your covering upon us, Lord. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for salvation, oh God. Thank you, yes. Lord, for salvation in our families, God, in our household, God. Thank you, Lord, for our loved ones, oh God. Hallelujah. God, that they would commit their, their lives to you, God. We thank you for our neighborhood neighbors, oh God. We pray, Lord, your protection, God. We pray, Lord, your hand upon our neighbors, our communities. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, God, that you are a good God, Lord, that you protect us and you keep us. Lord God, and we trust in you, God. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We pray, oh God, for, for, this, for this country, oh God. We pray, Lord God, yes. for this coming, Lord, election, God, which is not even this year, God, but there was so much going on, Father God. We pray, Lord, against the corruption, oh God. We yes, pray, God. Oh God, against the, the, the racism, Lord, the mm. spirit of racism, oh God, that is in the middle of this country, Father God. We pray, oh God, that you would touch the hearts, Lord God, and minds, Father God. I pray, Lord, that you would you would touch our lives, oh God, and we, Lord, will stand up oh god for the truth lord that we god will be able to share yes. oh god we'll be able lord god to lord that we will dis discern oh god mm. Mm. between the right and the wrong lord father god in the name of jesus i pray lord that you would strengthen us 
strengthen our hearts, O oh God, Lord, as we continue to trust in you, Father. Lord God, mm. hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We give you praise, we give you honor, Lord. We pray, God, for those who are in need, oh God, the needy, Lord God, those, oh God, without hands, oh God, those who mm. need a place, Father God. I pray in the mm. name of Jesus, Lord, your covering, Lord, your, your provision, oh God, upon us, Lord. I pray your protection upon each one of us, oh God, Lord, as we go, as we come, Lord God, you got our, mm. may we guard our hearts and our minds, Lord, may we be alert, God of what's around us, yes. oh God, Father. Yes, God. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah for your goodness and your mercy, Lord. Hallelujah. Surround us Thank all the days Lord. of our lives, God. We give you thanks and praise oh, in yes. Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Welcome, Sister Dion. Good to see you. Welcome. Uh, Dr. Love is with us. God bless you. We're just lifting up a praise. Um, as we um, continue, if anyone else wants to um, raise a Thanksgiving praise, we're thanking God for healing uh, for Sister um, Vesper, my husband, and others uh, among our circle that's been sick. Um, I love the lyrics to this song. Um, the, the chorus says, worthy is the lamb seated on the throne. We crown you now with many crowns. You reign victoriously. You're high and lifted up. Jesus, son of God, the darling of heaven, crucified, hallelujah. Worthy, 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 worthy worthy is the lamb tonight he's worthy of our praise he's worthy of glory and honor as i read earlier from um, psalms 8 glory and splendor and excellence belongs to him um, the floor is open god bless you hallelujah thank you lord thank you lord god Thank you, Lord. Father, we continue to lift up um, our sisters that have been coming in from the Virgin Islands, from Texas. Uh, last week, we talked a bit about um, Sister Monica told us it was about 105 or 115. Father, but your glory still fills the earth, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like. Father, you're in full control. Your eyes go to and fro. And God, you know us, you know us all things and you see us all things. So Father, for those in Texas, in the Caribbean, where Sister Judith and my family are, those that are in Florida struggling, where Sister Angelo went today, struggling in the heat, Last week, Brother um, Joel told us in Barbados, as he was connected with us from Barbados at 84 degrees, Father, you're still God. You're still in full control. We pray, God, you do help our folks to be wise and protect themselves, God. Those that need sunblock, those that can use a fan, whatever it needs to be to, to help themselves. Father, we thank you that uh, before you know it, Sister Glenda said that last week, before you know it, winter will be upon us. So God, we thank yeah. you for the seasons. Help us to adjust and accommodate for what is around us as your glory fills this earth. As we move now into the uh, study of your word, we thank you, God, that you, as we avail ourselves, you're filling us and you're teaching us how to be a blessing to others, how to give and not to to glamorize or make it a public announcement, public yes. service announcement that we've yes. given. Yes. God, these are the things that you're showing us. These are the things that you're reminding us. God, come have your way as we open up ourselves now. Bless and continue yes. to fill your manservant with the yes. beneficiaries. You're the beneficiaries yes. of the overflow, God. We thank you and we praise you now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Can I ask Amen. you to mute? 
as we move into the study of the word. God bless you all. Good night, sisters. Uh, give God thanks for another Monday night. We could come together and pray and study God's word. Not that we're doing this once a week, but um, it gives us an opportunity to come together and share. Excuse me. We're in Matthew chapter 6. And it seems as though we're crawling. But um, I, I pray that as we go, we, we go through Matthew chapter 6 that, um, and take our time and depend on the Holy Spirit to give us on this truthful understanding that God will continue to direct us and guide us this evening. Now we are at verse 6. We are at verse 6, and Jesus is talking about, but, but when you pray, but when you pray, um, and what are we doing actually? Uh, we're studying the instructions from Jesus for exactly how we should pray, and we need to pray, because he's saying, when you pray, not if you pray, or should you pray. So it is it is very important that we learn um, these specific instructions from Jesus so that we can completely follow them and get answers from our prayers. Now, instructions are important. And the only reason why we rely on instructions is because we really don't know what to do. <laughs> that is the only reason why we, we need instructions. If we know what to do, we would not need any instructions. Now, as I was thinking about this, I was thinking about something very elementary. Like for instance, how, how do we learn to read so that we can understand what is written? Because just about everything that, um, everything, everything is written as it were for us to be able to read. So if we can't read, we have real problems. And you notice that the first few years, the real formidable years of a child, right, is, is, is spent learning to read right so it is very important because we need to read learn to read we need to be able to read so that we can understand what is written and in order for us to do that something as fundamental as that which all of us have to do or all of us did at some point we have to follow a number of instructions right and we have to follow those instructions in order <laughs> so that when we follow them, we benefit from those instructions. So in the case where, and I find this very, very interesting because now I have been spending most of my time involved in, in, in um, reading and numeracy, of course, other things, but the actual foundation the actual foundation for learning is, is, is reading so that we, we learn to read so that we read to learn. And here Jesus is taking time out to give us instructions, right? And he's giving, the, giving us these instructions because he wants us to learn how to pray. So we know that if, if a child is learning to read and we know from our own experiences that first, we learn the names of the letters of the alphabet. Very elementary, but we, we're not, we're not going to make any progress unless we follow these precise steps. So we learn the letters of the alphabet. That's the first thing we do. Next thing is that we learn 
to recognize the letters. We learn to know what they look like so that whenever we see them, we can recognize them and, and, and we can identify them because it is so important that, that we learn to do this. Second, after sec the second thing we, we do after we learn the letters and we know how to identify them when we see them, we learn the sounds of each letter of the alphabet. So learning is really a process. And, and Jesus is taking time out to teach us. He's the teacher and we're the students who need to learn. And I'm using this example to, to, to help us to, to, to get to understand the importance of what Jesus is doing. And as, as, as children of God, as children of God, we are required to pray. And pray is such a very important part. I mean, we've been taught, we've been on this subject now for for several weeks, and it seems as though we will be on this subject for a while because the whole idea here is that we get the instructions from God, from from the Word of God, with the assistance of the Holy Spirit, our teacher, so that we can really be. We can really learn to pray and be, be, be beneficiaries of, of this wonderful gift. So the second thing we learned is would be the, the sounds of each letter of the alphabet. So we know what they look like when we see them, and now we know the sounds of the alphabet. And the third thing we learn to do is to blend the letters of the alphabet, right? And then after we blend the letters of the alphabet, we are now able to look at words and sound them out as it were. Do you know that we're in a situation today where lots of people cannot read, which is so unfortunate, right? And, and I'm not saying that disparagingly. I am saying that to, to, to point out that the same way we have we have people who cannot read we have issues with 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 not being able to pray because we we have not taken time out to learn how to pray and i pray god through the holy spirit that he would continue to teach us so once we've gone through that that process of learning to read then we can we can we can read any word that we find now sister val and and some of you on the line here would be in the classroom and we we discovered something that is really really not the way to teach children how to learn to read but it is it is widespread so here is what the ministries of education do they generate a syllabus right where the children are required to learn a number of words so instead of teaching them phonetically going through the process i just outlined what they do is that they would give these children the words to learn and what what they're doing is that they memorize these words right and they do a good job memorizing them. The problem is that if you were to change a couple of letters within those words, they, can't, they wouldn't know what you're talking about because they, they're not sounding out the words phonetically, which means that they really don't have the foundation for learning. I remember I was at a conference, an education conference, and the, 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 the some older teachers came what was talking what they were talking about how um because of covid there was learning loss and, and i find that very interesting because they're talking about learning loss because these children were able to read prior to going out prior to going out because going, not attending school because of the pandemic and they came back to school 18 months later and forgot how to read. How is that possible? I thought that learning to read was like being able to, like when you learn to ride a bicycle or you learn to swim or you learn to drive a car. 
you never really forget those things because if you look at how you develop those 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 steps to learn to do these things why you don't forget them we we were not doing that in our in our school system so these children forgot the words and then they forgot how to 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 read and they they they, they what they memorized they did not remember now if you look at what is happening here is that as far as learning to read is concerned right there are only 44 phoneme sounds in the English language, just 44, right? Now, in order to be, for you to be able to read by learning sight words so that you, you learn them and when you see them, you know them, studies show that you have to memorize 3,000 words rather than learning 44 phoneme sounds. And I, I could imagine how... <laughs> how we, we, we somehow or the other, we always find a way as, 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 as human beings to complicate what could be very simple, right? If we can find a way to complicate what is very simple. And that is why I'm taking time out for us to understand that Jesus is taking time out to teach us how to pray not because we are stupid, but because there are processes involved that must be applied, right? So the first thing that we have to do is to listen. We must listen and then do what we hear in order to learn. A teacher has a responsibility to work with learners to work with learners, because what he's trying to do is to get his students to learn. And Jesus was one of the greatest teachers who walked the face of the earth. And he sent to represent him when he left this earth, the Holy Spirit, who is a teacher. That is who he is. One of the jobs that he has is a teacher. And he wants to teach us from the word of God ex exactly how we should apply the word. So learning is really the ability to acquire or gain knowledge, right? Now, if we don't acquire or gain knowledge, we're living in a state of ignorance. And all of us have a level of ignorance, you know, because for instance, if you were to tell any one of us here to go fly a plane, I don't know if anybody has the skills, but I'm talking for me. I would not be able to fly a plane because in that regard, I am totally ignorant. I don't have the knowledge. And that's what, that's what this not having the knowledge means. So in certain aspects, we are ignorant, right? Yeah. And um, I would tell you that no amount of money can pay for the lack of knowledge which is ignorance, the lack of knowledge. And you know, the Bible spends a lot of time talking about the lack of knowledge. And here Jesus is trying to teach us so that we can obtain the knowledge that we need in order to be able to pray. So let us try to get an understanding of what the lack of knowledge is. So when we talk about the lack of knowledge, we're talking about in a lot of instances, we're talking about not knowing that we really don't know. We're talking about not knowing what we don't know. And actually, the reason for our failures in, in, in most instances is really the lack of knowledge. Now, we might be trying sincerely with all of our hearts to accomplish certain things in life. But until we learn to know what to do and how to do it, we will fail. I'm sure I'm not saying anything that none of that, that, that we all don't know, but it is always good to remind ourselves. Sometimes it is so good to just slow down. <clears throat> 
and try to question ourselves to find out where we are. Now, with all that I've said, I want us to hear it directly from the scriptures. And I want us to go, go to Hosea, Hosea chapter 4. And I am, I am going through Hosea chapter 4, not all of it, but some of it, so that we can get an understanding of what is happening here and how it is so important to listen to the number one teacher, the creator himself, Jesus Christ. Now, Hosea chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 1. And it says, Hear the word of the Lord, you Israelites. Hear the word of the Lord, you Israelites. And, and his, God wants us to hear his words. And he's saying to them, Because the Lord has a charge to bring against you who live in the land. And here is the charge that he's bringing. He says that there is no faithfulness, no love, no acknowledgement of God in the land. <clears throat> now, how are we going to pray with conditions like these plaguing us? So how do we know when no acknowledgement of God is in any land, is in the land? How do we know that? He's saying that there is no faithfulness and there is no love because God himself is love. So whenever love and faithfulness does not exist, clearly there is no acknowledgement of God in the land. And Hosea is making that very clear. We go to verse 2 where he says, There is only cursing, lying and murder, stealing and adultery. And he went on to say that they break all bounds. Now, what is being rebelliously done by people it, that based on the people he's talking about here is more than just cursing, lying, murder, stealing, and adultery. It's a lot more than that because he goes on to say at the end of that very same verse uh, that bloodshed follows bloodshed and verse 3 say because of this the land listen to what is happening here now because of this the land dries up and all who live in it waste away he says that the beasts of the field the birds of the sky and the fish in the sea are swept away and this is interesting because here is the question do we know why man's rejection of God's instructions affect the beasts of the field, the birds in the sky, and the fish in the sea? And someone would ask, well, what impact does our rebellion or failure to follow God's instructions would have on anything else but us? And we, 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 we're going to look at scripture to see why that happens. Because what we know is that God in the first place created man to have dominion over the beasts of the field, birds of the sky, the birds of the air, and the fish in the sea. God created us to have dominion over them. So if God created us to have dominion over them and we have lost fellowship, relationship with God, look at the impact that, that follows. Now, let God speak for himself. I'm going to Genesis chapter 1 and we're going to look at from verse 26. And God is speaking for himself because we always want him to speak for himself so that we're not saying anything that God did not say because he doesn't want us to do that. Then God said, verse 26 of Genesis chapter 1, let us make mankind, I'm reading from the NIV, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, 
so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. And verse 27 says, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. And verse 28 says that God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. So it seems as though when we, when we fall out of fellowship, we, we lose control. We lo so, so it seems as though all of the things that all of the creatures that we were supposed to have been ruling have lost their ruler. So things just go helter-skelter. And we saw that from the very beginning of, of Adam and Eve, because prior to their fall, the animals, the, the, the lions and the lamb lay down together without the, the lion trying to eat the lamb. It was only after they lost control. And, 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 and um, Hosea is trying to tell us that what seems to be a problem is that we need to learn we need to get knowledge about God's word. Verse 29 says, Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. And he says, they will be yours for food. But he was saying that all of these things, everything is drying up and there is a problem. And verse 30 says, and, and again, all of the beasts of the earth and all of the birds in the sky and all of the creatures that move along the grounds, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food, and it was so. And then we see here in verse 31, God saw all that he made, and it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. So God created man to have dominion, to have dominion, and to live under the, under, the, under the dominion of the kingdom of heaven. So we were supposed to have dominion on earth and live under the dominion of the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus now is getting ready to teach us how important this understanding is in prayer. Now we know that everything fell apart with the fall of man. And let's let we, so we so we see here in in um in Hosea chapter 4 the dangers of not following God's instructions. So let's go back to 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 verse 4 of of chapter 4 of Hosea I went there to show that what, what Hosea was saying is consistent with the word of God. But let no, one, let no one bring a charge. Let no one accuse another. For your people are like those who bring charges against a priest, he said. He says, you stumble day and night and the prophets stumble with you. And here is, what God, here is the message from God. He says, so I will destroy your mother. So, and we know that if mothers are destroyed, right? People will cease to exist. It's really no mother, no children. But verse 6 is very instructive. Where he says here in verse 6, my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge and he's saying because you have rejected knowledge now if we are we are rejecting knowledge it is very clear that knowledge is made available must be available in order for us to be rejecting knowledge 
right? So let's 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 keep that in mind because we don't have knowledge sometimes because we really don't know. But here he's saying that they know what they are rejecting knowledge. And that lack of knowledge that, that Hosea is talking about is not necessarily that they did not know, but they rejected knowledge. knowledge. And he continues to say, I also reject you as my priests because you have ignored the law of your God. He says, I will ignore your children. So the question is, is then what can we expect? What, what, what can we expect? Because we know that children only learn what they see others do. So verse 7 says, The more priests there were, the more they sinned against me. They exchanged their glorious God for something disgraceful. Now, you, you, you thought that, um, that somebody else besides Jesus, right, would have been able to teach us to pray because... It was a long time before Jesus showed up. And 2,000 years went by, and still it is relevant and important that we learn to pray. In verse 8, he says, The priests feed on the sins of my people. They, the priests, and relish their wickedness. And it will be like people like priests. I will punish both of them for their ways and repay them for their deeds. Right, and then we got come down now to, to verse verse um, verse fourteen, and he says, "I will not punish your daughters when they turn to prostitution, nor your daughters-in-law when they commit adultery." Now, when 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 we read here about prostitution and adultery, we're not talking about prostitution and adultery. In the natural realm, we're talking about serving other gods, having relationships with other gods. That is what he's talking about here. Because the men con con themselves concert with, with harlots and sacrifice with shrine prostitutes. He says, a people without understanding will go to ruin. So the lack of knowledge, he says, as we've seen it in the word, is going to cause us a problem. It's going to bring us to destruction. And he's saying here that a people without understanding will come to ruin. So prayer is what Jesus is saying, is really the way back to God. And we've grown up knowing and hearing that prayer changes things. Prayer changes situations and conditions. And it doesn't matter how dire or how hard or how difficult it is. We have a great privilege and opportunity to pray. To pray. Now, one of the things that we have to understand is that prayer changes things and prayer will change people. But prayer does not change God. The Bible says that he is the same when yesterday. He is the same when? Today? Yesterday and, he, and forevermore. And forevermore. So he's not going to change. There's no prayer that we could make to change God. Right? Whatever prayer we make will cause us to change and our circumstances around us. But there's no prayer that we can make to change God. So now we come back to, we come back to, to our, our text tonight. Verse 6. And so we understand now that Jesus is teaching us to pray. And when you pray, and, and look at the steps, and when you pray, first step, go away by yourselves. Now, there is corporate prayer where we would be praying with others and in groups, but it seems as though what Jesus is trying to tell us here is that we first need to have an individual prayer life. Because we, we saw how in verse 5, Jesus was pointing out that those who were praying were, were hypocrites. He called them hypocrites. And, and, and we made the differentiation between him 
referring to a group as liars and and, and here he is is referring to a group as hypocrites and he was saying that they were hypocrites because they like to position themselves they want to always want to be in a place where they can be seen the focus was never on god but the focus was on them and how well they can pray and for people to look up to them and we know that there is no one else in this world no one else, no one else who exists who can answer prayer but Jesus, but God. So Jesus is teaching the first step here. He says, go away by yourself. That's the first step. Remember we were talking about how we learn to read, right? We, we first learn to identify the letters. Then after we identify the letters, we learn the letter sounds and then we blend and then we're able to read. So the second step he's saying here is to shut the door behind you. Shut the door behind you. And he's telling us to do that because he wants us to pray. And the third step here is that we pray, he says, pray to your father in private. So this is the private prayer life that he wants us to build. And once we've developed this private prayer life, then we are going to be able now to go beyond our private prayer life. But this prayer teaching here is for us to develop a private prayer life. Then he says, then your father who sees everything you do. And the only thing that the father wants us to do and the only thing that we're supposed to be doing is following his instructions so he says then your father who sees everything you do which is the father's will which is what the father says because we have been learning that the will of god is what god says so his will would be what he says right so once we follow what his instructions what he says which is his will he is going to reward us now we made very clear this we we, 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 we sorted out very clearly the distinct differences between gifts and rewards and we notice here in this study of 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 um of of matthew 6 is that the focus was not on gifts but rewards and we know that we are rewarded for things that we do so here we are noticing again that like giving in private where god would bless us would reward us openly is similar to what to what the word of God is, what Jesus is teaching here is that we pray in private, we build this prayer life, and God is going to reward us. And, and, and we saw in Hebrews where he said, um, those who diligently seek him, that he will reward them. So it's rewards, it's for the things that he is asking us to do, right? So when we pray, and there, here's another second set of steps. So we got the first set of steps, right? Where we, we find ourselves in a private place to pray to God. And then we have another set of steps. Come with me to verse 7. It says, when you pray, don't babble on and on as the gentiles do so here is a do not he was telling us the things that we need to do and here is something significant that he's telling us not to do and, and, and it, is, it is early discussion time because we want to talk about this. We want to discuss this 
we want to get an idea, an understanding of what, what Jesus is talking about when he tells us that we're not to babble on and on as the Gentiles do. What is he saying here? Sister Love, I'm coming at you. <laughs> <laughs> I, would say, I would say that sometimes repetitious and uh, repetitious, but I, I don't want to say before, like, you know, uh, you see some Anglican Roman, people just keep on repeating things like, like, uh, <laughs> like in the Jewish tradition, they say, oh, thank God I'm not a woman, thank God I'm not this, thank God I'm not that. Repetitious babbling, you're not praying and according to the is it god give us guidance you know like our lost prayer people just go down babbling or repeating short babbling in oftentimes they are not even like it, it like you know you, you are brother joe if i'm talking to you now i can't be saying something like abstract on and on like I, i'm not connecting i have to connect with you so that we're making connection relational connection then that conversation so that, that that's what i would just said like the, the babbling is repetitious nonsense that on and on you're making chorus you just like abstract you just chorus in it on and on you know about what is already written you just rehearsing the, 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 the whatever is written you you just on and on i'm sorry that's yeah well yes yes anybody else has a take yeah, on this uh, babbling yeah, I would say, babbling, get to the point. Let him know exactly what you're saying. Don't add, don't take away, just go. Just like you say, when you boldly pray, let him know, I want this. But but then we got to remember, it's not on our time, it's on his time. But you got to, just like you said, yep. it's an old thing, like, don't go around the Marbury bush. Get to the point. Okay, anybody else? Uh, I would say also that he already knows us and our circumstances and what we need. So like Sister Angeline said, just get to the point. He already knows more than we know okay. around the situation. Right. But and, and notice he singled out the Gentiles. We're going to come back to that. Um, Sister Beverly, I saw your hand raised. Um, I'm thinking that the Gentiles, they weren't you know god's people so they didn't know his words they didn't know the word so they were not like praying the word of god yeah they they they, they were they were they were not connected at all to connected what right. was happening here right yeah so, so he says don't babble on and on like the gentiles do they, they 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 have no connection they have they, they they just they're just talking right so so here's why we should not babble on and on as the gentiles and we see it here as we continue to read down they think their prayers are answered merely by repeating let me underline this their own words again and again they are repeating their own words and this is instructive that jesus pointed that out the gentiles were repeating their own words now you see you see the you see the contradiction here or uh, 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 not contradiction, but you see how contrary what they're doing is to what Jesus is teaching. Because remember now, they're saying their own words and Jesus was saying that he only says whose words? Uh, God's word. What's the, what is God's written? Word. God's word, what's written? Father. <laughs> right, and, <laughs> and, 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 and I'm glad you made that statement, Sister Love, because remember remember the adversary trying to tempt jesus to trap jesus because he was going through temptation by the adversary and he was trying to trap jesus right by actually using the word of god right 
certainly he was using it out of context. And we know that when you take the text out of the context that the adversary is gonna con you. That is why it is so important that we know the word, right? And Jesus was consistently, continuously telling Satan what was written in the word, right? Okay, so don't think that our prayers will be answered mainly by repeating our own words. That is what Jesus said. So to get answers when we pray, we're coming back to what you're saying, Sister Angeline, which is so correct. To get answers when we pray, we must be praying God's word. But more significant than that, we must be praying for God's will to be done. Any other prayer, any other prayer, but for God's will to be done is not going to be answered. How come? How so? How so? Because it's, I'm trying to answer. Say it's it again. Want, there will be done on earth as it's in heaven. No, let's not go. Let's no, not okay. go there yet because we, oh, we're going okay. to go sorry. in little bits and bites to make sure that we get a full stomach full, a full stomach that 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 is digestible. Not praying our words, but praying God's words. Yes. Yes. In that now, we we had a study a few weeks ago and. That has come so much alive for me, where we said that there are three wills. Mm -hmm. And just today I was I was reading a book and saw that there and said, well, this is a great confirmation to what we were studying the other night. There are three wills. Okay, Sister Marina. Sister Marina, yeah. your hands yeah, is raised. So, yeah, um, so there's there's a time when we have to pour our heart out to god so there are different types of prayer and uh, you know when we are praying god god hears our heart i know he we pray god's word but there there's a time of prayer when the word of god said pour your heart out to him and uh, so because there are different kinds of prayer but if someone is burdened with uh, with whatever it is, whether it be a death and their heart is burdened and they, 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 God place on your heart that compassion, you have to pour out your soul to God in prayer. And God hears that prayer. And there are times when we, we always would pray God's word, but... You know, this vain repetition is like, Lord God, thou that hearest pray, thou, that kind of pray that is not coming from the heart. And I believe this is what empty words that are being prayed. And I could be wrong, and I'll say like, this person I've been wrong before. Well, we, we, we're not wrong or right, we're discussing. <laughs> we, we, we're discussing we're not we're, we're not wrong or right we, we we're putting everything on the table as it were to discuss but what jesus is teaching here right that that whatever we pray has to be god's will right okay now we had a study a little while ago a couple of weeks ago where we were we recognize that there are really three wills, God's will, and God's will is, is, is his word, is what he says. So we know it's his will. His will, his instruction, that is it. Then we know that the adversary now has a will, and his will is his word, and the, 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 the deception and the lies that he would bring to counter to counter God's will. And then we have man's will. And yes. our will is really limited to choosing either God's will or the adversary's will. And we saw that 
very well borne out through scriptures, but initially starting with Adam and Eve. They, they, God gave them his instructions, which is his will, which is his word. Mind you, they had fellowship with God every day, but the, here was the adversary whose will was to destroy them, to make sure that that relationship with God is broken. And they decided to, 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 to abandon God's will, which is God's instructions, which is God's word. They abandoned that and they decided that they were going to accept and follow the will of the adversary. And of course, we know from scripture what Jesus said, that the will of the adversary is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. So our prayers, I understand what you're saying, yes, we are burdened because of, of um, different situations. Like you, you, you spoke about um, somebody going through a bereavement or, or, so, or, or whatever the problems are. The good thing, though, is that we can come to God in prayer and he's asking us to take those burdens to him, right? Because he cares for us. So that's where we carry them, right? So... We continue where he says, and we can only pray for God's will to be done when we're saying what God says about any situation, no matter how dire, no matter how terrible it is. The, the word of God, the Bible, the word of God, which we believe has significant instructions as to how we, how we should function. Word of God connected with the Holy Spirit, really gets us to where we need to go. So as we focus on what Jesus is saying here, Jesus said that he says only what his father says. He says nothing more and nothing less. Right? So here is the question now that we're going to be talking about for a little bit. So how do we know? How do we know what God said about every situation or circumstances that would confront us. How do we know what God said? Brother Joel, can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Yes, go ahead. Um, a real life question. Mm -hmm. So um, my mortgage is coming up and I'm short of, I don't know, a hundred dollars. Uh huh. Right? So, you know, it automatically as a human, you start to try to call everybody, but we should follow God's word and says, Father, according to your word, you say you will supply all of my needs according to the riches and glory. Right. And believe what happens if you don't get that hundred dollars after you say that prayer. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just asking. No, that's a that's a good question. In the first place, <laughs> you're not going to say that prayer and that hundred dollars fall in your lap. As a matter of fact, they don't even have money in heaven. <laughs> uh, I, th I think um, I'm I will answer this that question because it just happened to me on Saturday, and I did. To be honest with, you, I was just upset the tenant, but I've been so say come get two hundred and eighty eight because I've been so nice to them, help the they just like people from the street get the kids to go to medical school. So I've been so kind. They owe me 10 grand. So, okay, come get this. Do you know what? I trust them to go get the money and I, so I could use it to pay for the utility of 1800. They said they got to shut it off today. I say, God, you know, look at what I'm doing. God, you know, it's in your hand. Please. When I call Saturday, they said, no, they're not going to give me payment plan. But this morning, I say, God, it's in your hand. You know the whole truth. This is you. I trust you. So when I call, they charge me just two hundred dollars and give me payment plan for you know what I mean for one. For I trusted the Lord. What can I? I couldn't do nothing. All right. That's why I answered that question with that hundred dollar. You could call your mortgage company because you trust the Lord. They could say, you know what? We'll give you seven days or one month break to pay it. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Love. I appreciate your response. Right. And, and, and 
the thing about it is that, yes, you're going to pray and ask God to supply your needs, right? The, the, generally, we figure that we could tell God how to do it. But God works in mysterious ways. We don't know how he's going to supply the need. Sometimes it, it, we are surprised how that need is supplied, how is supplied, right? But we have to go and pray because the word of God says that he supplies some of our needs according to his wishes in glory. I don't think so. It's all of our needs, right? And there are lots of times when we pray, right? Because we have, we have an urgent need and that need is not met instantaneously right but there are all kinds of situations and circumstances around that that you would say my god god didn't hear me god not answering me, my prayer and we'll say all of these things but it, it, it doesn't really it doesn't really work like that we have to no matter what the situation is we have to follow the instructions of the word of god and not only for not not only pray but follow those instructions because you never know, you never know how God is going to meet that need, right? Now, a lot of us say that we believe, right? A lot of us say that and we say, Lord, we believe. Lord, we believe. Lord, I believe. We say that, right? And we know that if all we were to say is that we believe because believing alone you know is really mental assent we have to complete what we say we believe right with the appropriate action and i always use this example and i've used this over and over because it's the easiest one i can find that i can relate to right because i i i don't know anymore I believe I am starving to death, and I believe that if Sister Marina brings me a, 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 a plate of food and I eat that food, I will not starve to death. This is what I believe, okay? And and faith goes beyond just believe. Just faith goes beyond believing. Faith gives you the instructions gives you the message. Faith gives us the message, right? Now we have to take that message and respond to it. So here it is that I am starving to death. I have a plate of food, but I keep telling myself, I believe, and what you're saying you believe is correct. I believe if I eat this plate of food, I will not starve to death. But if all we do is say that we believe and we don't take the appropriate action, what do you think is going to happen? As much as we say we believe, you will you start, starve. To death. You starve. <laughs> That's what that. Okay. Nothing won't happen. No, something big will happen. Death. You're going to die. You start to death. <laughs> right. And her sister love was saying she prayed to God. And then what did she do? She went and she called the customer service. And it. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is not because Jesus spent all night praying, you know. I I realized that the other day. He spent a lot of time praying, right? And then what did, what did he do after that? He didn't go into his bed. He, came, he left where he was, and he had no place to lay his head according to the scriptures. But he left where he was, and he came, and he worked all day doing his father's work. And what he was doing was incredible work, unbelievable work, healing the sick, raising the dead, doing all kinds of mirac miraculous things. Because it is just not praying and saying that we believe, but we have to we have to take the appropriate action. And the Holy Spirit will prompt us as to what actions we need to take. 
Somebody is, oh yeah, Sister Diane. Yeah, you know, all of us had been in that particular situation, but you know what I admire and love about God? He's an on-time God. The fact of the matter is, um, what Sister What's Her Name said about the mortgage, trust me, the God in whom we serve is not going to make the mortgage, the date for the mortgage come and that $100 don't come. That is how me believe. I've been in that situation and trust me, him is an on-time God. Until we say we're supposed to ask and it shall be given unto us. David said he was young and he got holy, never seen the righteous being forsaken, neither seen begging for bread. So, we as children of God, when we ask God for something, yes, believe, and they say faith with us works is dead. So all of that come into in line with when we ask God for something. But one of the things we know of a fact that him is on time. He's so on time. Him not go make we go through the embarrassment of the mortgage, no peer or whatever thing, because he's a God that him can't lie. So if him say him, our needs, he will supply. Him can't lie. Uh, Matthew, Matthew chapter 6 is going to give us a very comprehensive answer to that, that very same question you ask. Um, Sister Kathleen? Yes, thank right. you, Sister Dion and, Sister, and Brother Joel. Yes, okay. And as we go into Matthew, as Matthew 6, I mean, I was surprised to realize how important important it was to just take I, i've read matthew 20 matthew 6 over and over and over and as i as we started to look at it in terms of jesus teaching about he started out by teaching us about giving in secret so he could reward us and now he's talking about praying in secret so that he could reward us and now he's giving us in two sets of instructions and the last one he's giving us he's telling us don't be out there using your own words. Because the words that we're using come from one or two, so one of two sources. They either come from the Father, our Father, and, and actually we're praying to our Father. And, and when, when the disciples asked Jesus to teach them to pray, and Jesus, they must have been very much alarmed. And of course, you know how the Jews, the Jews were treating Jesus when Jesus told them that, that, that God was his father and he and his father are one. They were upset about all of that talk about man, a man referring to God as their father. It was Jesus who introduced that here in the Lord's Prayer. Right? So we're actually praying to our Father. We're not just praying. We can't be just praying. We have to be praying to God because God is the only one who can answer prayer. Right? So we don't want to get involved with a lot of babbling because we need to find out what God said before we go waste our time and get no answers to our prayers. And that is what Jesus was trying to get us, where Jesus wants to get us to. So it, it, this is critical. Because we, we, we don't want to go on babbling like the hypocrites do. He says, he says the, it is the hypocrites who babble. Right? Sister Love? What I want to add again sometimes, even though we're, we're believers, is for some reason, you made a mistake. For example, you know you have a mortgage to pay you out of carelessness or you didn't see god maybe you go buy expensive jewelry you know diamond just to please a friend or whatever god will make you you know you you go pray to god that you're okay that's your mistake you you this you cause that you, that was your fault that you, you misplaced your priority so god might use that to teach you a lesson you know, I don't how we teach you a lesson. I, I don't, don't know. think it's God teaching you a lesson. No, no, no. You, do, you do something ignorant. That's what no, that's no, what Hosea is talking about. And we're gonna focus on that a little bit. 
Yeah, okay, that's what I'm saying. Even when yeah. you when you start to pray, God, I want to pay. I'm sorry, I did, I think I used the wrong term. Yeah. You you want the mortgage be paid? Uh, I don't know. So you you have to bear the consequence. That consequence, you know, you know, might be Choice. timely. Choice. Yeah. Choice. The choice, yeah, the choices that you made. But in honest, if you make a good faith, uh, like the hundred dollar, you know, you have to pay your title. I'm just forget your title or whatever you have to pay. That one is different. God, he, God, look into all those, all those scenarios before our, our prayers are answered. I'm saying, in addition to, okay, that's what I want to add. Yeah, all right. Let, let's follow Jesus' teaching here in Matthew 8, Matthew 6. So he says here in verse 8, he says, Do not be like the hypocrites who go out babbling. Right? So don't be like them. And so, and so now another question we have to look at, because as we get into this chapter, it's going to clear up a lot of things. So why should we not be like them? And here is why he's saying we should not be like them. He says, for your father knows exactly what you need even before you ask him. It is either the, Jesus is telling us the truth and Jesus has to be telling us the truth. So it's, there is no either or when it comes to Jesus. For your father knows exactly what you need before you ask him. Now, people, some people would say, uh, well, if God knows what we need before we ask him, why do we need to ask him? Because he said we should ask he him. He said it's to in his word. Yeah, he exactly. said to us, he said his word. And you told us back in the end of uh, May, in my notes, that if we don't ask, like he said we should, we're sinning against him. Correct? Well, we're in, we're in violation of his word. And, and we're going to end right here because it's 8.53. Look at Luke 11.9. Luke 11.9. So I say to you, Ask. This is Jesus' teaching. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. Right? And everything is in context because John 15, 7 says, if you abide in me, there are requirements here. And my words abide in you. You can ask. You will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. And I'm yep. going to read one more scripture. And here is what James is saying. So we're going to have to look at all of this contextually. You ask and do not receive. Because you ask amiss. Mm -hmm. Why? Are we asking a miss? He says that you may spend it, coming back to what Sister Love was just saying, that you may spend it on your own pleasure. So keep those, remember where we start. It's 8.54 and next week we're going to continue because Matthew 6 is deep. Yeah. What was the last scripture you quoted? James 4 and 3. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss. You're asking, he says, and, and scripture explains itself all the time. That is what I like about Bible study. You ask amiss that you may spend it on your own pleasures. That's big. And clearly what, it is, what he's saying is that when you ask like that, you are not asking based You're on missing. God's will. You're missing. Hmm, hit and miss. Jesus. Well, it's not hit and miss. You're not hitting nothing here. You miss. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Jesus. 
<laughs> okay, Sister Val, we'll take it up from here next week. Oh, this is so powerful. This is so deep. Oh, my gosh. And it made me look back to um, May 15th and one of the, the lines you kept saying back then, the power of focused prayer. We got to be focused. We got to be serious. We got to be, you know, do as he do as we're told. He said to ask. We got to ask. And, we can and, ask and how to ask and how to how ask to, that yeah. you don't ask or miss. <laughs> right, right. This is beautiful. This is wonderful. Well, I hope you got something from this lesson. Um, good to see Sister Sandra. Are you there? We want to hear a greeting from you. And we hope you're prepared to share in the communion remembrance with us. We thank God for taking you out and bringing you and your family back home. Take it away. It's my week. I didn't even know, but I, I can, I can, I can take it. Sure. Thank you. Okay. How was Body your guys. travel? How are the boys? Before you go there, the everything boys, went well. Everything went well. We had a great Praise time. God. We went safely. Came back safely. The boys did well. Thank to you. God the glory. Hallelujah. So, um. Father God, we come to you tonight, yes, as you Lord. said in your words, that we should ask, mm -hmm. ask, and it shall be given. And so tonight, God, we're giving you thanks for what you have already given us, yes, your Lord. body, your broken body, yes, the body that was broken for us. So we will have no more lack. We will have mm -hmm. no sickness. We will have no pain. We, mm -hmm. we, we will have everything that you said we have. As it is in heaven, so shall it be in our lives, in our homes. Mighty God, thank we you. thank you for that. Thank you. We thank me. you for your broken body that heal us, mighty God. You said by mm -hmm. your stripes we are healed. And so yes, we are confirming yes. tonight and confessing. Mm -hmm. Your healing virtue through each and every one of us body tonight yes, as God. we eat of your body oh. and drink of your blood. We yes, are giving you thanks tonight for the finished work on Calvary. So thank you, we will eat tonight your broken body. You said you. as often as we do this, we should do it in remembrance of you. And so tonight we are remembering the promises that you have given unto us. We are healed. There is no lack. Sickness and mm. disease have no lot in our body. So let us eat. Mm. Glory, glory, glory. In Jesus' name, we give you thanks. And while we eat, we'll mm. also drink. Thank you, Lord, for your finished work in Calvary. We give you thanks. We magnify your name, mighty God, for your promises are amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We bless your name. We, have. we bless your name, Jesus. Thank you for the sacrifice. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for the yes, cross. God. Thank we you, praise you. you. Rise up, praise to him tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Thank, thank you, God. We honor you, Jesus. Thank you for your blood. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you,
Thank you Thank you, Father, for the let's look at the next the next three verses verses 9 10 and 11 for next week spend a little time meditating on those Oh, man. Reading and, and, reading and, 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 and Sister Kathleen, oh, okay. um, let us know if you'll be able to do communion with us next week. Yes. Until next time, brothers yes. and sisters, peace God be on you. God bless you Amen. all. Amen. Amen. Good night. 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 Good